Hello students, in this video we will talk about the tubuloglomerular feedback. This feedback mechanism involves the part of the tubule and part of the glomerulus. The part of the tubule involved is macula densa and part of the glomerulus involved is the afferent arteriole. The feedback mechanism which is involved in the autoregulation of renal blood flow wherein the renal blood flow is virtually kept constant if the perfusion pressure varies over the mean blood pressure range 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury. This feedback mechanism is called as the tubuloglomerular feedback. And the significance of this feedback is it maintains the constant blood flow and if the blood flow is constant that means the GFR is also maintained. So in the graph you may observe that the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate are constant over the mean blood pressure range 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury. This intrarenal process called as the tubuloglomerular feedback maintains the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. And how does this intrarenal process work? So let us take a situation where the renal blood flow increases. This would increase the glomerular filtration rate. That means more sodium is filtered. If more sodium is filtered, there is increased luminal sodium and chloride concentration which is detected by the salt detectors or sodium sensors called as macula densa which are at the junction of the thick ascending limb and the distal tubule. Now this macula densa will release transmitter agents. One among them is adenosine which acts on the afferent arteriole. By acting on the afferent arteriole, it causes afferent arteriolar vasoconstriction and this will cause the reduction in the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate and maintains it to the normal level. So in the figure, if you see here, we have shown the part of the tubule involved which is macula densa and part of the glomerulus involved which is the afferent arteriole. So in the tubular lumen, when there is an increase in the sodium chloride concentration, this will enhance the uptake of sodium chloride across the apical membrane of the macula densa cells via the sodium potassium 2 chloride symporter and this would lead to increased release of ATP and increased release of adenosine from the macula densa cells. Now this adenosine will act on the adenosine receptor on the smooth muscle cells of the afferent arteriole. This adenosine by binding to the receptors increases the calcium concentration in the smooth muscle cells and causes vasoconstriction of the afferent arteriole. And uh, the same adenosine will act on the granular cells and inhibit the release of renin. So there is decreased renin release. The afferent arteriolar vasoconstriction will cause the reduction in the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. So coming to the next situation where the renal blood flow decreases and in this case there is a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate. So decreased delivery of sodium chloride to the tubules and this will decrease the luminal sodium chloride concentration. So there will be decreased uptake of sodium chloride into the macula densa cells and they detect the change and uh, they release the transmitter agents. Now in this case the transmitter agents released are it releases less amount of adenosine. So decreased release of ATP and adenosine will decrease the intracellular calcium concentration in the smooth muscle cells of the afferent arteriole and cause vasodilation of the afferent arteriole. And uh, there will also be release of uh, or enhanced production of prostaglandin E2 when there is decreased luminal sodium chloride concentration in the macula densa. Now both these will increase the release of renin. Decrease adenosine and increase prostaglandin E2 will increase the renin release from the granular cells. 
this renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 1 will be converted to angiotensin 2 by angiotensin converting enzyme. This angiotensin 2 is a constructor and it causes vasoconstriction of the efferent arteriole. Now vasodilation of the afferent arteriole by decreased adenosine and vasoconstriction of the efferent arteriole by angiotensin 2 both with would uh, cause an increase in the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. This is how the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism maintains the renal blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate when there is fluctuation in the mean blood pressure between 80 to 180 millimeters of mercury. Now I have a question for you. So when the mean arterial pressure decreases from 130 millimeters of mercury to 100 millimeters of mercury, the renal blood flow is maintained via the tubular glomerular feedback mechanism. Secretion of which of the following transmitter agents is decreased? A. Renin B. PGE2 C. Angiotensin 2 D. Adenosine Please select the right answer or right option and leave it in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Please like, share and comment and do subscribe to my channel Simple Concepts in Medical Physiology.